Hello, my name is Carlos Sanchez. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Riverside Methodist Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. I'm going to be talking today about 40 volume intracardiac echo as a tool for intraprocedural management of left atrial appendage closure devices. Here are my disclosures. I'm going to leave that for a, a few seconds. Okay, well, 40 volume ice is a novel alternative imaging modality for visualization and placement of left atrial appendage closure devices, especially in patients unsuitable for TEE or general anesthesia. The 40 volume ice device that you see on the, on the picture is a 12.5 French catheter, 90 centimeter in length, that it's introduced via a 14 French sheath from any femoral vein axis site in the groins. The catheter tip can be steered in uh, four directions, anterior, posterior, left, and right. And you can see the specifics there on the screen about imaging modalities and other catheter specs. Okay, the left atrial appendage closure procedure begins with a transeptal puncture, putting the 40 volume ice catheter in the right atrium. You then obtain the interatrial septal view in search for the fossil valves by rotating the catheter clockwise to about the four o'clock position and performing a slight posterior tilt. You can see on the slide a side-by-side -side 2D and 3D views of the interatrial septum to find the best location for the transeptal puncture. It is very important to note that the Watchman procedure can be done with the imaging catheter from the right or left side. However, ICE imaging is optimal from uh, the left side. It is very important that before you cross the ice catheter into the left atrium, make sure to dilate the inner atrial septum with a back and forth movement using the watchman delivery sheath. You can then retract the watchman sheath back into the inferior vena cava. You then project your image from a LAO or REO projection and advance the ice catheter tracking and using the transeptal wire as a fluoroscopic landmark. Make sure that if you encounter any resistance at any point while advancing the ice catheter, stop pushing and retract the catheter and re-advance but adjusting the direction of the catheter as you track the transeptal wire. And that's why it's important to use different angiographic projections to make sure you're in line with your transeptal wire. Once your ice catheter is in the left atrium, you're going to find the best view to show the left atrial appendage on 2D imaging. From there, you then will switch to multiplanar reconstruction or MPR quad layout imaging to assess the left atrial appendage morphology, including the depth and ostium dimensions for device sizing. You can optimize the crosshairs in multiple orthogonal views to find proper coaxial alignments and measurements. Once you confirm the proper alignment of the crosshairs in relation to the left atrial appendage morphology, you can perform multiple measurements at different angles in separate images as shown on the right side still frame image of the left atrial appendage ostium, where multiple measurements are done in this coronal plane. This is very helpful to obtain the, the precise device sizing that you're going to use for the procedure. This is a very good example of the ostium measurements. To the left, you have a CT angiographic still frame 
measuring the ostium of the left tetral appendage. And then to the right, you have an example of a 40 volume ice image that resembles the one from the CT scan. This is very, very useful, as I mentioned previously, because it can, can help you precisely measure the device that you will need for the procedure. More importantly, you can also see from the 40 volume ice and obtain circumferential measurements and an area to obtain an area derived diameter as you would with CT scan. This, this is obviously optional measurements, but can help you and give you more information the time you want to decide what device size you want to implant on your patient. It is also important to note that you can perform 2D measurements for the ostium diameter with 2D imaging. At the end, it's true the operator who has to consider all measurements in determining the proper device size. Once all the left tetral appendage measurements have been completed and you have adequate device size selection, then the operator proceeds to deploy the left tetral appendage closure watchman device using the conventional technique that you know. And following deployment, the pass criteria must be met as you would under TE guidance. The pass criteria, remember, stands for position, anchor, size, and seal. The first step on the protocol we use to determine the deployment criteria is to perform a 2D analysis of the Watchman device. You use the pass criteria as demonstrated on the images. As you can see, there is position, anchor, size, and seal. So we do utilize the 2D functionality as well to be complete when assessing uh, the pass criteria post-watchman deployment. The device, remember, is measured with 80 to 20 percent compression. To the left, you can see the chart that displays a range of what the compression measurements for each size device should be. When the measurement is performed, it is important that the threaded insert is visible and that a maximum measurement is performed at the shoulders of the device. You can see the picture as an example. This is a very good example of measuring compression rate from shoulder to shoulder with a threaded insert visualized, visualized on the image. You can see the compression, uh, compression rate measurements there. Once you complete the 2D intracardiac echo imaging measurements, you proceed and start performing the volumetric analysis. In my experience, the main advantage of 4D ice over 2D ice is the ability of the system to create real-time multiplanar reconstructions or NPR images with cross-sectional planes at coaxial orthogonal projections with and without color Doppler overlay, as you can see uh, on the left side, and you'll see some color images next. Remember, real-time NPR layout views at orthogonal on FOSS projections of the Watchman device allows you uh, to measure precisely at the level of the shoulders to evaluate compression throughout uh, the 360 degree circumference of the closure device from a single imaging projection as you can see on the right side of the screen. So this is very important measurements. Once you complete the compression rate measurements, you can also use real-time 4D volumetric portrayal of the Watchman device displayed from any desired rotational perspective to assess any peridevice gaps or leaks. Remember, these volumetric illustrations resemble conventional TEE views that conform the pass criteria and any 0, 45, 90, or 135 degree angles. Once the pass criteria is met, and you are completely satisfied with every aspect of it. Then the Watchman device can be successfully released. Now once released, it is very important to reassess the Watchman device with 2D color Doppler assessment, but also NPR quad imaging and assess the device in orthogonal views and 4D views with and without color Doppler overlay. 
this is important to make sure you, you didn't leave any gaps or per device leaks that need to be addressed at the 45 day TEE and report that if necessary. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure presenting to all of you. If you have any question about this topic, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email is carlos.sanchez at ohiohealth.com. See ya.